Life Strength and Health Podcast, Episode 52. Everything needs equal attention, and people um, these days are not paying enough attention to their mental state. Welcome, everyone. This is Life Strength and Health Podcast with Jamal and Kim, where each and every week we educate, empower, and inspire you to live healthier. So let's dive into the show. Hi, Kim and Jamal here, and welcome to another episode of Life Strength and Health Podcast. I'm Kim, and I'm joined with Jamal. Greetings, everyone. And uh, peace and blessings. Yes, and this is episode number 52 featuring Mood Shot. But before we dive into today's podcast interview, uh, we want to share this week's organic food for thought. And as I mentioned in episode 51, that this is a new segment that we're adding to our new rebranded show, Life Strength and Health Podcast, where uh, we're going to be sharing facts, uh, just information for you to ponder on, uh, humor, things to just get your the wheels spinning in your mind regarding health and, uh, and well-being. So this week's organic food for thought is uh, people living in tropical areas are less likely to catch and spread chicken pox because their year-round sun exposure gives them healthy levels of vitamin D. Vitamin D is a very useful nutrient with benefits that go beyond bone health. It helps support different tissues and helps to treat or protect against various diseases and health conditions, including the seasonal flu. Scientists have discovered at least 3,000 genes that are regulated by vitamin D. You know, that's, that's right on time because we are entering into the cold flu season and a lot of things as the weather starts to uh, get colder, uh, there's a lot of things that that go around, especially with our children, Uh, chicken pox uh, running through uh, the school system and things like that. So just knowing that you can actually uh, help to prevent chicken pox through vitamin D. Yeah. Um, a lot of times, you know, in the warmer climates, they get more vitamin D, but you can supplement it. You can actually give your child vitamin D supplements and you could take vitamin vitamin D supplements to actually increase your immunity and boost uh, boost your immune system. Yeah. So I think that's powerful. So take vitamin D. Right. It's all about prevention. Yes. Be on the front end and not the back end. And and uh, like we said in that, that one study, that was 3,000 um, mm-hmm. connected to 3,000 different genes. So, you know, vitamin D, I mean, that's that's powerful. It's, re- it's really one of the most powerful vitamins uh, that you can take as far as its functionality in the body, especially for black people, because because of our dark skin, black people living in uh, colder climates, uh, I, we don't get as much sun exposure and it takes longer for our bodies to absorb that uh, um, sun to produce the, the vitamin D. So it's very important uh, if you're uh, of a darker complexion to make sure that you're taking vitamin D. I used to recommend uh, our clients to take vitamin D during the winter. But now, uh, as I study vitamin D a little bit more, I think that it's important to take vitamin D all year round, including right. when you're getting uh, extra sunlight. I just think it's that powerful and uh, it makes you that much more healthier. So again, take vitamin D. Yeah, definitely. So uh, diving into this week's show, we interview Moot Shot. Uh, it was a great interview. It was very fun talking with her and uh, just hearing about her story and journey to where she is today. And I'm going to share some um, information about her and her bio in a few minutes. Uh, but it was fun interviewing Mo- Moot Shot. It was a great interview. I'm looking forward to sharing it. Yeah, that was a great show. And I always like when we have the opportunity to discuss things that we haven't spoken about before. Mm-hmm. And we got a chance to really introduce a lot of people to a new form of yoga and I think that uh, it's a very powerful form of yoga and I think that it's something that uh, people should look into. Yeah, so definitely stay tuned for this show and really about uh, just being your best self, stepping into your power and walking in that power and accessing that power most importantly. So uh, before we dive into the show, I'm just going to read a little bit about Moot Shot. Moot Shot is a Ross Seiki master and teacher having studied with master teacher Rakit Kajara Asada Nebethet in Oakland, California. She has served as editor for many books published by the Temple. Moot Shot is a certified 
certified kundalini yoga and meditation instructor. After eight years of practice, she began study with Krishna Kaur in Los Angeles, receiving her level one certification in 2008 and later becoming a certified yoga for youth teacher under Krishna's tutelage. Level two kundalini yoga and meditation certifications were acquired under lead trainer Gurachan Singh Kasla in Española, New Mexico, and at Kundalini Yoga East in New York with Sat Jivan Singh and Sat Jivan Kaur. So that's just a little bit about Moot Shot. Um, she has uh, an extensive bio. And for the full bio for Moot Shot, just go to the show notes pages at lifestrengthandhealth.com forward slash 52. And you can get direct access to the show notes pages and uh, Moot Shot's full bio. OK, so without further ado, let's dive into today's interview. Hi, Kim and Jamal here, and today we are joined by Moot Shot. Moot Shot, how are you? I'm well, thank you. I'm well. Greetings, sis. Greetings. So uh, thank you for joining us, and we look forward to sharing some amazing information with our community today. Yes. Uh, where, you're, you're in New York, right? Uh, yes, I'm in the Bronx, the Bronx, New York. Okay, how how long have you been out there? We were looking at your bio, and it was saying that uh, you had got some training on the West Coast. Are you originally from the West Coast, or have you always been in New York? Um, I was born and raised in New York City. Okay, we, um, my family, <laughs> my family and I lived in Manhattan, and then they moved to the Bronx um, at about seventy eight. Nice. Okay. Um, Bronx has yeah. a special place in my heart. That's where I was born, and I lived there until I was eight and moved to Jersey. Oh. So I have a lot of family out there, and uh, yeah, the Bronx. Oh, okay. mm-hmm. <laughs> Ooh, the boogie <baby> down. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Musha, uh for a lot of our listeners, this is their first time uh, learning about you. So, why don't you? Um, just tell us a little bit about yourself and your personal journey into you becoming who you are now. Oh, okay. Well, I am Mukshat Shimsut Gamprem Kaur. I use both my comedic and yogic spiritual names. Um, translated, Mut means Mother Goddess and Honorable Lady Shimsut, she who follows divine law. I am a Raseki healer, master level, and teacher. I'm a Kundalini yoga and meditation instructor. Instructor, I'm sorry. And my spiritual name, Gyan Prem, means lover of wisdom. Kaur means lioness princess. Nice. So I am a comedic woman who practices Kundalini yoga and meditation. Nice. Yes. And and, uh, what led you to those particular um, healing modalities? I know they both deal with uh, energy and a lot of unseen uh, forces. Like what, what was your path? Like what led you to getting into those particular arts? Well, you know, we all go through that intense period in our lives when we're hungry for knowledge Mm. about ourselves and our people. So books have been and still are the resource that has um, been a big part of my search for who I am. Mm -hmm. And it was um, Muwada Ashby's Egyptian Yoga, The Philosophy of Enlightenment. Yes. It turned me on to Kundalini Yoga. He kept mentioning Kundalini, Kundalini, Kundalini. So I said, well, let me just go to the source. So, um, So that book turned me on to Kundalini Yoga which in turn turned me on to uh, Raseki. Mm-hmm. When, I be- when I began looking for a community of people of, of like mind who could support me in my quest to know myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the, uh, the big revelation to me that there was more going on inside of me than, than that occurring outside happened one day when I was coming home with my brothers and sisters and my friends from the Lutheran church that we attended. I was about 10 years old and I had this pure, I had this pure and intense love 
for God. Mm -hmm. And in my child's mind, I never had, um, I never thought of God as a particular race, but, you know, to me, God just was, Mm -hmm. was just this powerful thing. And it happened on this day of sunshine, I remember it was sunshine, that um, I just stopped in the middle of the sidewalk as my siblings walked on, and I just had to explore this feeling that I was having of pure bliss and pure joy. I just felt it fill me up. I was filled up with bliss and joy. And I remember saying aloud to myself, I feel so happy. I feel so happy. Mm-hmm. And as I was saying this, I remember there was this man walking his dog, and he, as he passed me, he turned around to look. And I just kept repeating, I, I'm so happy, I'm so happy. And this woman passed, and she was looking at me curiously. As I was just standing in the middle of the sidewalk, marveling at this unusual, heightened feeling of happiness that I was experiencing. And now I know that that was my first kundalini experience, my first um, experience of my kundalini energy rising. Mm. So in a nutshell, I'm a seeker of the knowledge of my true identity. I am she who knows that everything is inside of her, that there's nothing outside of me, that everything is inside and everything I need is inside of me, and that's pretty powerful. It is. That, that's, that's a very powerful experience. And, uh, you know, you, you, you talk about kundalini yoga, and there's so many different types of yoga out there. Can you explain to us exactly what kundalini yoga is? Okay. Um, well, um, kundalini yoga and meditation is a yogic form that incorporates the physical and the spiritual. Mm -hmm. It will transform you. You cannot practice Kundalini Yoga meditation on a regular basis and not be changed for the better. And it's often referred to as the yoga of awareness. Mm -hmm. You can be blissed out and on a natural high practicing Kundalini Yoga meditation. Ultimately, though, you will become aware of your shadow self, your ego self, Mm -hmm. And that can be painful. It's like things come up, you bring things up and out. And uh, Kundalini Yoga and meditation are important because it works on all of those areas that are negatively impacting our community due to stress. Mm. Now, um, you know, when, when people normally think about Yoga, when they hear the word yoga, they think about, you know, being in a class with yoga mats and, you know, bending and into different positions and and things of that nature. You know, how what's what's a kundalini uh, yoga approach look like? Oh, okay. Um, Well, you know, other forms of yoga focus on physical alignment. Mm hmm. Um. In Kundalini Yoga, the series of exercises or um, kriyas are a specific set, uh, set of exercises that generate energy. And the energy is organized for specific outcomes that um, will deliver those who practice it to a specific energetic state. Mm-hmm. So it begins with, um, we begin with um, pranayama, which is breath work. We move into a series of postures during the exercises. Um, There's deep relaxation, and then there's a meditation after that. So um, it's not, um, uh, you know, like in some yogas, you you maintain these poses for, you know, it's very physical. Mm -hmm. And Kundalini Yoga is physical also. Mm -hmm. But the main thing is that it's, it gives one greater awareness. It loosens up the ego's grip on the consciousness. Yes. And its fundamental purpose is to rid you of neg- negative thought patterns. Negative thought patterns are the root of the stress, the emotional, emotional turmoil, the disease, the depression, the overeating, the unhappiness. You know, we were meant to be bountiful and blissful and beautiful. We were meant to be happy and creative. We were meant to just 
be rather than always doing, doing, doing. We were meant to be beautiful. And um, Kundalini Yoga does that. So it's a very, it's a very, it's physical, but it's also very spiritual. And that's how it is different from many of the um, other yoga forms out there. Yeah, that's powerful. I mean, you just said a, a whole lot that I want to, uh, you yes. know, kind of talk about. But I, I do want to share this. Uh, the first time we took a uh, Kundalini yoga class, you know, I didn't know. I didn't know what it was. And, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, just like you said, more of a physical the movement. Um, alignment, the movement. Right. <laughs> and, you know, we were in. We were in this one posture. I don't. I don't remember the name of it, but we had we up. had our arms out, kind of like our, our thumbs up, and we were just doing these fire breaths. And man, like that was that was so intense. My arms felt like they were about to to fall off. So I mean, I I know that it it can push you and be physically challenging. And I mm-hmm. and I know that for me that it, I had blockage in that area that I had to to uh, to break through. And I, I felt amazing uh, after, but right. But in the midst session, of it, <laughs> that session was more intense than any. any you keep like, looking at the clock, like <laughs> how long we gonna hold it? <laughs> it was more intense than any uh, physical yoga class that I have ever taken, and it yeah. caught me off guard. I did not expect like that level of uh of intensity and it's not to scare anyone because right. uh, it was an amazing it was. experience but no it it can be uh intense so i totally uh, un- understand where it is that uh that that you're coming from yeah yeah and, and uh one one of the things that uh you were talking about was just um just that uh that that clarity and just that shift uh, emotionally, it, it, this is one thing that I think is so important to to keep talking about, and that is just the the emotional and energetic blockages that a person has. People don't realize that the 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 seed going past the roots, the seed of most and all, almost all diseases start on an energetic and emotional plane. So we, yeah. we create these blockages uh, within us that, that begin to manifest on a physical level. And I, yeah. I think it's so important to, to stress that because a lot of times when, uh, when people are, are dealing with health challenges, they don't go back f- far enough. They, they start with the, the physical and they're just dealing with the physical, but they never right. go back and they never clear out the emotional and energetic blockages. And that's why they keep yeah. repeating the it, same it, problem. Yeah, it keeps repeating over mm-hmm. and over again. And they're just trying to find different ways to do it, but not going back uh, to the seed. So you're presenting a, a solution, uh, Kundalini Yoga, to help people to go back. And, and it's important for people to understand that you have to go back and you have to deal with the emotions yeah. and you have to deal with the, the energetic blockages like that is, is, uh, is so important. And, yeah. and, and from, from your experience, like what what type of uh, results have you seen in people going back and dealing with the source of everything that's that's going on in their lives? Oh, okay. Well, let me let me start with myself. Yes. I don't recall I don't recall which kriya or meditation we were doing, but I do recall that um, during this particular class, and I I take classes uh, downtown on 18th Street. Mm-hmm. During this particular class. I begin to weep, and this was early in my um, in my Kundalini Yoga um, experience. I begin to weep. I wept. I cried, and mucus began to come from my nose, and I mean lots of it, lots of it. It filled one hand. One of my hands was filled with mucus, wow. and then the other hand was filled with mucus, and then it began to overflow. I mean mucus, and I. I really unblocked something that day. I cleared something out, some, some old emotion or negative thought that had become a toxin to my body. And afterward, I felt this distinct shift in me. And the trajectory of my spiritual growth just shifted. It shifted upward 
and it accelerated. And I began to see myself more as a spiritual being rather than a human being. Mm. And that difference opened the door to more uh, self-knowledge, more God knowledge. And, you know, that just continues. And I have to say that my most consistent, my most consistent students were those that I taught in Brooklyn. Mm-hmm. I was with, I was with them for two years, and I was about to see, I was able to see the changes in them over time. Mm-hmm. And I remember this one student in particular who came to class in a very fragile state. Um, she had, um, she had a, a nerve. I would say that she was very nervous all the time, mm-hmm. very shaky. And um, kundalini yoga and meditation work on strengthening the nervous system. Mm. It balances the glandular system. It purifies the body and it calms the mind. So by the time I left in March, this student was much, I mean, she was a different person. She was much calmer. Um, She was not fidgety. She used to be fidgety all the time, especially during class. And she was even able to control an astral travel um, situa- situation during class. I was playing the gong. Mm-hmm. And when she, hears the, when she hears instruments like drumming, she goes into a trance. Um, the gong, I didn't know that the gong affected her that way. I found out mm-hmm. after class. But um, she was able to... Uh, control that astral travel situation during class on her own, Mm -hmm. which was something that previously presented a challenge to her in her personal life that required like intervention. Mm. So, and others who take the class um, report feeling, just feeling of just having a feeling of expansiveness after every class, as opposed to no such feeling like that after other yoga classes. Mm -hmm. They just feel this, they just have this feeling of expanding, which is what it does. It expands you. Yes. And before we continue on, let's take a minute to hear from our sponsors. Let's face it. We are living in a world set up for us not to be healthy. And with the overabundance of health information available, it's so easy to get overwhelmed and confused on which path to take, which leads to inaction and not making health a top priority. Well, that can all change. We are Life Strength and Health, the number one center in New Jersey for helping you to detoxify and address your digestive system challenges. We provide support, accountability, guidance, education. We will be with you every step but a way to help simplify this process and help you to reach your health goals. So if you're ready to take action, if you're ready to make your health a top priority, then visit us at lifestrengthandhealth.com or give us a call at 1-800-503-7127 and book your consultation today. Don't live in the New Jersey area. Don't sweat it. We can work with you virtually. So visit us at lifestrengthandhealth.com or give us a call at 1-800-503-7127 and book your consultation or virtual consultation today. You know, a lot of times, in, especially in our society, people are so just really caught up in their in their physical body, not understanding that they do have a spiritual body that has a, a health and an, an anatomy mm-hmm. and that, that you need to, to feed that part of yourself and make sure that that part of yourself is, uh, is healthy as well. And uh, for a lot of people, this is new. This is new to them and it can be uh, scary and, 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 and spooky to them and not really understanding that, uh, you know, this is a part of them. This is a part of who you are. And this part needs mm-hmm. to be, it needs to be fed. It needs to be, uh, you know, worked on. Uh, what, what, what would you say to a, a person that, you know, is hearing this for the first time and, and this, you know, may seem a little scary for, for them, like their, you know, their energy and, and things of that nature? Okay. Well, first of all, I don't at all, um, I don't at all um, publicize or speak to the woo-woo part, quote unquote, mm-hmm. of Kundalini Yoga. You know, because everybody, everybody comes with different experiences, and everybody gets something different out of it. Yes, there are some people who who come and they think they feel nothing, and they think that nothing's going on, but it is. Um, and then there are some people who are just so sensitive 
that um, they feel shifts and changes right away. And um, I do find that we melanated ones um, are appear to be um, a lot more sensitive uh, than others quickly. Mm-hmm. You know, whereas um, for some it takes some time before they before they realize that there are um, changes happening. But um, Kundalini Yoga is very subtle, and um, I would not. Um, um, I would not uh, think that anyone should uh, shy away from it. Mm-hmm. It's not scary, actually. And when you, you when you practice it with a um, certified um, instructor, which I am, mm-hmm. um, you uh, there's nothing to fear. And uh, there are very uh, there are a variety of breathing mechanisms that we use to um, uh, control the breath and control what is happening. So um, it's not a scary thing at all, and I don't um, I don't big up the um, the woo woo part of it. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Thank thank you for for saying that and. Uh, and then it seems like a, a big part of that is is meditation, and we mm-hmm. know that you know the average person doesn't spend any time meditating. And uh, one of the things that we offer at our holistic center, Life Strength and Health, are uh, meditation classes uh, because we mm-hmm. obviously understand the importance of it. Can you speak about that? Like, why is meditation so important for people to develop a meditation practice? Well. Just like the physical body, the mind needs a rest. The mind needs to rest. And it gets a chance to do that during meditation. Um, During meditation, uh, we get to uh, go within ourselves. Mm -hmm. We get to... um, um, uh, you know, when we become really good at it, we begin to uh, be able to connect, connect uh, with the spiritual world uh, in more direct ways. Um, uh, meditation helps to calm us. Mm-hmm. Uh, meditation helps us to uh, uh, clear our minds. Mm-hmm. And uh, like I said, it's it's just as important as um, taking care of the physical body. You know, everything is in moderation. Everything should get equal attention. Yes. You know, work, play, our spiritual selves, um, our mental selves, our physical selves. Everything needs equal attention. Right. And people um, these days are not paying enough attention to their mental state, Mm -hmm. um, to their spiritual selves. And um, I think that uh, uh, in my experiences, some people try meditation and they say, oh, I can't do it. I I just start thinking about everything. I I can't um, can't sit there long enough to, you know, to meditate. And, um, you know, I just say to those people that it's a practice. It's a it's something that you have to practice, just like um, other things you've practiced in your life. Um, but the benefits the benefits are enormous, enormous. Yes. And uh, it meditation makes you limitless. You realize how limitless you are right. uh, when you meditate on a regular basis. Yeah, I think that uh, you you raise something really really important a um, couple of things just just how we need to give attention to all aspects of ourselves because we're in such a linear society people kind of like go with one thing you know some people it's just you know they're focused on their food or some people like they focus on their exercise mm-hmm. and and some people even you know the people that are, are doing um, meditation they're just doing the meditation and you just point out the importance of moderation and you working on all aspects of yourself. Also, that meditation is a practice and um, you have to 
to do it consistently right. to settle in. So a lot of times people say, oh, I can't sit still. I can't shut my mind down, you know, all these things. But no one gets it on the first time. Yeah, they give it one time <laughs> yeah. or They're two times. They're very hard on themselves. Yeah. 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 And I'd just like to add, too, that, um, you know, there are different ways uh, to meditate. Mm -hmm. And I think that for beginners, um, they should um, focus on the breath. Right. You know, when you have a uh, something to focus on, it um, cancels out all of the other distractions that might occur or it lessens them. So focusing on the breath, uh, focusing on the mantra, hekau, you know, focusing, uh, focusing on that. And uh, one thing about Kundalini Yoga is that, um, um, you know, it, it, it runs the gamut, you know, from simple uh, um, breath meditations to these um, two-hour-long complex um, breath um, posture and mantra mm -hmm. and eye focus meditation, you know. Yes. So, um you know, you you can go from from one small step to some giant steps. Yes, and um, and and try all of them out and feel good about yourself. Yeah, you know something else that uh, you uh, brought up was just calming calming the mind, mm -hmm. and I, and I want people to really think about that because if your mind is always racing and and you know you always busy and monkey doing mind. yeah the monkey mind is jumping all around like just imagine that like taking a moment to calm your mind down like no thoughts like slow your thinking down think about how refreshing and how rejuvenating that could be for you to just literally calm your mind down there's so many of our clients that say that they can't even sleep at night because the mind is racing like just think about the benefits of being able to empty out is just such a powerful thing. Right. And also just remember um, not to compare your journey to others. And I think that's why yeah. a lot of people are so hard on themselves. You see someone that's been practicing for years and you expect to look like that when you begin. But yeah. everyone has their own journey. They have their own story. So you just have to be gentle with yourself and just take mm -hmm. it a day at a time. Yeah. That is so true. That is so true. And uh, <laughs> another thing about Kundalini Yoga is that most of it is done with the eyes closed. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. most of it is done with the eyes closed. So you're not spending your time uh, comparing yourself with others. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you're, you're really going within yourself, working on you. Yes. And that's another thing that I like about it. Yeah, yes. A journey with that is mm -hmm. powerful. Yeah. So let me ask you a question. Um, can you give our, our listeners just something really basic uh, that they can begin doing uh, that, that's safe and just will help them to begin this, this path of uh, meditation and realizing their uh, inner selves? Is there something that uh, you can give them that's really simple? Oh, well, I, I'm glad you asked that question. Um, well, for starters, for starters, Kundalini Yoga breath work is especially powerful, mm -hmm. uh, particularly within the Kriyas, the series of exercises. And uh, Yogi Bhajan teaches that the mind follows the breath. Yes. The mind follows the breath. So the key to controlling the mind is in controlling the breath. Yes. And, yes. And I would suggest that um, people start with long, deep breathing. Long, deep breathing has so many benefits. Can I give you a brief description of long, deep breathing? Please do. Oh, okay. So to breathe long and deep, uh, you begin by slowly filling your abdomen, your stomach with air. And next, you expand your chest with air. And last, you lift the upper ribs and your clavicle, the collarbone area with air. So it's a, it's a long and slow breath. First expanding the abdomen and filling it with air. Then expanding the chest and filling it with air. And last, lifting the upper ribs and the collarbone, filling them with air. So it's lower 
middle, and upper. And you do this slowly. And when you exhale, you expel the air out slowly. And finally, pulling the navel back toward the spine so to get that last bit of air out. And long, deep breathing has so many benefits. It relaxes and calms. It influences the parasympathetic nervous system. It increases the flow of prana or sakim, that life force energy. It reduces and prevents the buildup of toxins in the lungs. It encourages the clearing of the small air sacs. It stimulates the brain chemicals, the endorphins, that help fight depression. And the list goes on. It, it starts, uh, you know, it secretes, um, uh, during long, deep breathing, it stimulates the pituitary gland to secrete, which enhances intuition. So I would really uh, encourage people to start with just breathing long and deep and slowly and exhaling very slowly, just doing that. And just try doing that for, for three minutes yes. and then work your way up to seven minutes and then work your way up to 11 minutes uh, and more. Yes. Long deep breathing. Yes. Thank you for that. That was, uh, yes. it was basic, but at the same time, powerful. extremely powerful. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've spoken about this with some of our um, other guests in the past. Uh, it's just so amazing that we're walking around with this healing tool <laughs> that doesn't cost anything. You don't have to go anywhere. You know, yeah. you don't you don't need in anyone. All you got to do is just sit down and breathe. And yeah. I, I think that as simple as it is, it's very complex for people to wrap their mind around. All I got to sit down and do is just breathe. But you're telling me that's all I have to do. And if people overthink it to the point where they don't even do it. But, you know, yes, all you have to do is just sit down and breathe. Just just yeah. follow the instructions that was just laid out for you and you're going to begin to feel and see a difference in your life. Thank you so much yes. for that. Yes. And yeah, you're so welcome. It's a great stress reliever. And that's, um, I think, you, you know, stress is what's impacting us uh, the most and leading to, uh, uh, you know, all of these uh, stress-related diseases. So, yeah, that breath is uh, powerful and important. Yeah, and for people out there that would like to follow you and um, possibly learn from you, come out to uh, to the Bronx for some some classes and things like that, can you provide us with uh, some contact uh, info, website, uh, you know, social media well, info? Sure. sure. Um, my web my web address is www.inlightyogaandhealth.com That's light spelled the, um, <laughs> the, the normal way, L-I-G-H-T. Yes. Okay. Inlightyogaandhealth.com My email address is inlightyoga81 at verizon.net or people can contact me at my number, which is 646-571-9500. And uh, I'm in the Bronx. I'm in the uh, northern part of the Bronx. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Powerful show. We, we really appreciate having you on. You're so welcome. I, um, I thank you for uh, having me on. Yes. I um, appreciate what you to do well, um, thank you and helping people to um, uh, know what's out there to their benefit to to benefit them in in, in uh, so many ways yes yes and and before you go uh, any uh, last words you would like to share uh, with our, our listeners uh, let's see um well, I just like to say that I am so blessed and thankful, and I just love what I do, and um, uh, I encourage others 
to get into a position where you are loving what you do. And that's something that you can manifest in your life uh, mm. yeah. very easily now these days. Mm-hmm. Get into a position where you're loving what you do and uh, uh, in a position where whatever you do allows you to tend to the other parts of you. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we, we, we really appreciate you. Keep yes. up your, your amazing work. And uh, we, you know, we, we speak. So we will uh, we'll, we'll talk to you in the near future. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. Peace, Peace. Sis. So that is the conclusion of our interview with Moot Shot. Hopefully you enjoyed the interview, but most importantly, you receive value from it. And for access to the show notes pages where we list uh, links uh, regarding the show, Moot Shot's contact information, uh, just go to lifestrengthandhealth.com forward slash 52 and you will get direct access to the show notes pages. Okay, so until next time, live healthier. We want to say thank you for listening to the show and for access to the show notes pages, more podcast episodes, blog content, as well as more information about our center, Life, Strength and Health, then just visit us at lifestrengthandhealth.com. Until next time, live healthier.